This is my talk about graphite. Um, wait, wait, they're still talking now. And graphite is a basically it's a tool for um, visualizing metrics. Um, ask any question in the middle of the talk. Um, we'll try to just kind of roll it as we go. Uh, who am I? Um, I'm a co-maintainer of graphite. Um, I'm a salt stack co-maintainer as well. I love uh, beer, bacon, and open source. Uh, also a GNOME, uh, GNOME Foundation uh, member and Sysadmin team member. And I work as a Linux geek for a local uh, Chicago finance firm. <coughs> so uh, Graphite is really cool for visualizing problems. Um, that's primarily what most people will use it for. Um, anything time series, so like Apache, request per second, uh, API latency, um, you know, OpenStack cloud builds per minute. Uh, anything that you can basically put a name and a number to, you could visualize in Graphite. Um, there's a lot of people that really like graphs um, that are in our community. So, like, here's an example. Um, shows, let's see, this is actually one of our users. That's, yeah, that's, that's one of the dashboards that shows network info, IO rights, RSS feeds, uh, news articles for like a news website. Um, Graphite is not a replacement for something like, say, Logstash and Elasticsearch. Um, it's not designed for text data. It's designed for, like, numbers. So, like, you give, it, you give a, um, a metric a name, and it has a value. And the value has to be a number. The value can't be... You know, like a, like a JSON document you shove in MongoDB. It has to be a number. Um, it's not, you know, a, a replacement for keeping a really good syslog or... Uh, it, it's not a logging tool. It's, it's a metrics tool. And that's what a lot of people sometimes forget about it. Um, it will help you solve your problems. It will help you find your problems. It won't fix them. Um, it's not a unicorn. Some people think it might be, but it's not a unicorn. Um, that's a pretty awesome unicorn, though. <coughs> um, Graphite's made of three main pieces. Uh, Graphite Web, which is a, essentially a web UI. Uh, Carbon is kind of the daemon that writes the cache, cache data out to disk. And Whisper is the uh, database library like RD. Uh, Graphite Web is made, it has a composer for building ad hoc graphs, a uh, dashboard for kind of saving those graphs and just like a, like a big collection of those graphs. Like you might have a, you know, a like database dashboard that has your writes, your reads, your errors, your replication lags, um, and then a REST API for developers and for other cool dashboard tools. So Composer is really the main thing you'll see in Graphite. It's, that really sucks on the screen. Uh, it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it allows you to build ad hoc graphs. Uh, dashboard is just for taking a bunch of graphs and shoving them together into a screen. Here's uh, this is this is uh, for Apache Cassandra. Um, they have some tools built in for building graphite monitoring dashboards. Mailgun, uh, Railgun, or excuse me, Rackspace is Mailgun. Um, they monitor their Elasticsearch infrastructure using graphite, and here's some graphs, just kind of showing the kind of things you could build using it. Uh, the JSON API is probably my favorite part of Graphite. Uh, it allows you to do some really interesting things with the data to um, put feed into other tools. Like there's a um, check Graphite Nagios plugin to where you can say, here's a, here's a metric name and here's a threshold I don't want it to uh, I don't want it to break. Like if your you know, API response time is more than 500 milliseconds, that might be a problem. Um, you can si simply set check graphite. Instead of hitting your API directly, it'll just hit the graphite data, which could be you know, like an average, like a moving average over time. So that's really helpful for kind of trending. Uh, here's a few of the, um, let's see, here's something else. So here's a few of the different functions that I like to use. Um, there are a lot. Um, some series for just summing a series of uh, metrics. Moving average is nice for 
um, keeping the graph smooth as you're kind of like, a lot of the tools are actually real-time dashboards. Um, and just keep them up on like big, you know, HD screens. It just kind of says, well, says, well, this is the average as, you know, within the last hour. Um, I do a lot, my company does a lot with networking, so non-negative derivative is what you would use for like, you know, like interface counters that might reset to zero. Um, you don't want your graphs to be really strange, so you, you'd apply a non-negative derivative. Cacti style is kind of nice as well, and that it will take any, any metric and automatically add min, max, average uh, to it. Maximum above is great for alerting, um, because you can say maximum above, you know, x. Um, um, sure, it's a HTTP, uh, HTTP is like for what websites use. Um, it is a kind of way for websites or tools to talk to applications over the same language that websites speak, which is HTTP. Um, so basically, because HTTP as a protocol is kind of like a lowest common denominator, um, Tools in every language exist for working extensively with HTTP. So it's very easy to speak HTTP. And so it's very simple to write tools in any language that you want, you know, language agnostic, to get data into or out of something that uses an HTTP REST API. Um, so like here's a, uh, this is a dashboard called uh, Dashing. Um, <coughs> it uses the REST API that's just kind of a random example. Um, there's links to most all of this stuff um, throughout. Um, so Carbon. Carbon is a really important part of Graphite. It is the, it, it serves as several functions. The most important is probably the cache. Um, you actually send metrics to Carbon and Carbon writes them out to disk. Um, so Carbon, for each, excuse me, for each um, type of metric, like right here, we have Apache Busy Worker, just kind of as an example. Um, this is the actual metric. Let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit. And no. Uh, this is actually the metric name. The metric name would be like servers.www.fooworkers.busyworker. Um, and this is saying keep five minutes of data for one day, 15 minutes of data for seven days, one hour for 30 days, and six hours for a year. <clears throat> so this is just kind of how you would uh, keep, your, keep your data. It'll automatically uh, average out and roll over data. So is that like an in-memory processing specifications here, or? Um, The storage schemas, it's, the answer is yes and no. Uh, <laughs> so the, can, can you repeat the question, please? Uh, Is it specifying the yeah, in memory processing requirements? Is it specifying the in memory processing? So, okay. So, is this the in memory processing requirements? So, sort of. So, when you send metrics to Carbon, it uh, caches them in memory for like a certain interval. Mm -hmm. And then it batch, in, in batch to you know, keep your disks from murdering themselves, hopefully, yeah. um, will batch the disks right out. So that way you have, you know, we'll just pretend a thousand metrics come in and it'll batch a thousand and write them out to disk. And this is saying after you have, you know, if, if your metrics are only coming in at five minute intervals, store them for one day, so 24 hours worth of, of five minute. And then after, you know, after the, the, the it's just, just like, a, like a FIFO, um, or yeah, it's just like, a, like a, a queue. And so after seven days, it will just take those five minutes, you know, every, chunks of three and average them into one data point. Okay. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, feeding carbon is really easy. It's, I think, really what um, made Graphite as a project take off. It's very, very straightforward to get data into Graphite. Um, this is basically the simplest Graphite client that I come up with. But what it really boils down, oh, that's not so great. Uh, what it boils down to is basically a dot delimited metric name. And so you could have like a top level container, like, you know, um, email dot, I don't know, us dot some username. <coughs> and then a value as a floating point number. And then just a Unix epoch timestamp. 
Um, that's really it. If you can get those three things and you can pipe them to port 2003 on your Graphite server, you have a Graphite client. Um, and anyone can do that. It's Like I said, here's a really, here's a really silly uh, shell script example that basically just pipes random data to a metric called foo.bar.boss. Um, any questions about this? Okay, um, car so again, I said Carbon has kind of three functions. It also can aggregate metrics. So say you have, you know, like, um, you have Apache logs that you're parsing with a tool like uh, Logster, and it's saying for every single request, fire a graphite event. But you don't want every single request to be a data point. You want every minute worth of request to be a data point. And so you would fire them into an aggregator, like graphite aggregator or like StatsD. Um, Graphite aggregator isn't bad. It's easy to set up. Um, but honestly, StatsD has a lot more features. Um, in my experience, I just use StatsD instead. And there are about a million forms of StatsD. Pick your flavor, Ruby, Python, C, Go, Erlang, Java. They're written in everything. So pick one that you like and use it. Um, StatsD is awesome. <coughs> uh, Carbon Relay. Um, Carbon Relay is really what you use if you need to scale graphite for more than one carbon cache. And so the Carbon Relay um, will let you use regex-based rules or mathematic consistent hashing to essentially shard your metrics amongst different cache instances. So like, for instance, some, some metrics you know come in every two seconds, and th that will just murder your disks on your primary Graphite server. So you want to send that to a cache that has, um, has all SSDs, or other, other metrics you know you won't be reporting on a whole lot, and you won't be accessing a whole lot, so it doesn't matter that it's on slow, like, SATA disks or something. Um, if yes? I, if I want metrics, but I only have a small application, would it be bad to have the Graphite stack running on the same machine? No. Okay. No, nice. not at all. And would someone need to start scaling up? And also, I guess you should repeat the question. So the question is, um, is it bad to have Graphite running on the same server as your application stack, if it's a small application? And when is a good time to scale that out to its own dedicated instance? Um, I would use normal system run skills, you know, like look at your IO. IO is really the first thing I would look at. The carbon cache okay. tends to be the thing that, I mean, it's just, it's basically like an, a better RD. RD will murder disks because it's a million small random writes. Um, watch your IO. That would be my biggest advice there. Um, but no, for, for, you know, like my company, we're doing upwards of 3 million metrics every 10 seconds, and that just yeah. destroys IO uh, on any normal you know, set up with just one server. So mm -hmm. it, it, it just depends on, on your hardware. Oh, follow-up question. <coughs> um, I'm actually running my application on, on uh, Rackspace. So IO is probably worse, I guess, since it's a virtual machine. Okay. Um, so what, does that mean I should? What kind of, um, so, so the question it's was. It's a really simple application. It's just Django right now. I mean, eventually we want to do more stuff. The, the, the question is, um, if the application is running in the cloud, like Rackspace, uh, is that really bad for I.O.? I would say that depends on how, many, um, how often you want to collect the metrics. Again, if you want one second resolution metrics, okay. and you have you know, 50, 100,000 things, whatever, that are sending metrics, that's not going to work. If you're, if you're saying, I want to send metrics every couple minutes, that should be perfectly fine. Okay, um, so these are the... Um, this is an example of the regular expression-based rules that will allow you to say, well, these are the, these are the graphite caches that I have, 10.1.2.3, 10.1.2.4, port 2004, and myserver.example.com. And that's just, you know, again, it allows you to, via regular expression, say, I, wanna, I, I know how these metrics come in, and I want to shard them manually to these hosts. Um, in my experience, I actually just use consistent hashing. Um, because we just over, we essentially over beef up our whole carbon cache back in and sh shove everything in one kind of shared set of caches. Um, so Whisper. Whisper is essentially a Python library that's a better RD. Um, <clears throat> better than RD? Why do I say better than RD? Um, well, let's, let's, let's look at this. So in RD in speak, 
data retention policies are configured via RAs using reverse Polish notation. Now, if any of you have used RPN, it's very, very painful. <coughs> so, wrong Polish, not a Chicago Polish. Uh, so, here's an example RA <laughs> from uh, Stack Overflow. Clearly, it has to be right. Everything from there is right. Um, so, what this essentially does with uh, 300 second steps, I don't want to get this too extensively, but basically, this first, the first line stores your um, data for five minute averages for one day. So, let's look at the kind of carbon equivalent of that. Um, so, it's basically right here. Where is my mouse? Right here. It says 5m colon one day. Um, it's a little bit more human friendly, I think. Um, and so 15 minute average for one week, one hour average for one month, six hour average for one year. It takes, like I said, uh, reverse Polish notation is, it, it's a pretty significant barrier to entry and it just takes some time to learn it versus a little bit more human friendly, this carbon storage scheme is. That was kind of one of the design goals, was to make it a little bit easier for humans versus machines. <coughs> okay. Um, yeah, huh, what? Um, so that's, that's kind of why uh, Whisper is better than RD. Um, the biggest other feature is, is that with Whisper, you can backfill old data. So say you have a host that's sending metrics into Graphite and it goes off, the, like your network connection gets cut, but you still have the data from logs. You want to replay the, lo the parse logs back into Graphite to get the metrics to fill in your graphs. Uh, it's very, very easy, and as a format, Whisper allows you to do that. It just basically takes the holes and fills them with, with, uh, with nulls, and then you backfill it and does the right thing. Um, so that's kind of the high level of most graphite. Um, the really interesting stuff is basically just some of the tools that people have built with graphite. Uh, graphite itself is more of a framework than anything. Uh, graphene is probably one of my more favorite ones. Let's see how it shows up on this. Um, so Graphene is a real-time, essentially, dashboard that you would put on like a big HD TV. Um, and it has things like this speedometer-looking gadget, um, and this just time, you know, time series data. Anything that you can envision with time series, you can put in a graphite, and you can graph in real time with Graphene. Um, Graphene is kind of a framework. Like you have to know a little bit of HTML and you have to understand kind of what you're doing to build it. But if you like to build uh, monitoring things, it's really awesome. Um, Giraffe. Giraffe is also one that I really, really enjoy working with. Um, Giraffe uses uh, D3.js. I don't know if anyone here is familiar with D3, but for data visualization, it's kind of like, yeah, it's amazing. <coughs> um, so, Giraffe is kind of interesting in that it's, a, it's actually a JavaScript client. It is, let's see if I can do the legends here. So, does all that rendering in JavaScript in HTML5? Or? Yes, all of this is, uh, yes, this is actually SVG. Um, and these graphs are coming in real time. It's actually, if you were to look at the Chrome Web Inspector, it's actually doing like a, an AJAX request hitting the Graphite Render API directly and pulling down the data as JSON. Um, and so you can filter it and if it would actually show up right. Um, this is just a very nice tool for, again, you know, like management like this, likes these type of things. You can say, oh, well, here's a dashboard that shows, uh, you know, our key performance indicator style metrics and here you go. Um, and then Giraffe also makes it nice and it'll, it'll know the graphite speak to kind of switch between, oh, I want to look at one day, here's you know, the one day breakdown versus one hour, and you can just click on these and it'll do the right thing. Uh, the CSS is a little interesting, so um, you tend to want to hack on that to make it integrate with your existing stuff, but it's really good stuff. Can you speak to why they thought uh, people would like the format or regex better than the RPM? Um, so the question was... Your personal preference, but, but why did the uh, people who built this... So the question, the question was why um, do we think... Why did the people that built Graphite think that 
Um, the regular expression base, let me go back to that really quick. Um, the regular expression bre base breakdowns were easier than um, reverse Polish notation. Um, I think it's just the guy that built it was Chris Davis. He was at Orbis at the time. Um, he didn't like RPN. Like if you look on um, the RD tool website, the guy who wrote RD, he actually says he specifically picked re re reverse Polish notation to make his code easier and that it was actually harder to use. Like that's, that's his own words. Um, and I think a lot of people that haven't used RPN that are kind of new to it but have similar experience that it's not impossible to learn. Like I learned it pretty quick. Um, but it's just a little bit more human friendly um, to do a regular expression. I, I think it's a matter of preference. Yeah, because when people came from an HP background, um, instead of any of the other calculator backgrounds, they it sort of went along with the old HP. It, it was just the way HP people and people thought. F funny enough, I started out on an HP UX. Um, so, I mean, I, I didn't build the tool. I, I can't really answer that question, but I think it's just uh, he, he wanted something a little bit simpler. And this is a little bit more human. Like, at least the, the breakdown of, like, um, days versus minutes. Let me find it really quick. Right here. So, like, 5M colon one day is five minutes of data for one day. That's a lot more human friendly than saying, well, your step times your size times your uh, counter and coming up with the, the, the number in seconds. And just try to make it a little more human friendly. Does that answer your question? Digital watch, OK. <laughs> OK, so let's go back to where I was. Where was I? Well, I, I just wanted to hear you talk about it because I was interested in the thought behind it. Yeah. Because like if, if, if I'm telling somebody, if I'm in a, in a room full of programmers and one guy says, I like COBOL, and I go, eh, and another one says, I like APL. And, well, I understand the APL guy. I don't understand the COBOL guy. And, and that, I think that works in this type of situation as well. Um, uh, another big difference is that with RD, um, the schema is stored directly in the file. And with graphite, carbon is actually the daemon that writes out the file. And it's sort of a hybrid of both. Carbon knows a schema, and the Whisper file itself has a schema. Um, but it's a slightly higher level of abstraction, I think, compared to RD. Does that? Oh, OK, yeah. All right. Because you're, you're, you're saying things, and I'm listening. It's OK. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, cubism? Cubism is kind of an interesting, um, it's another JavaScript framework that was written kind of on top of Graphite. And it allows for really compact, um, real-time monitoring style dashboards. Uh, some people really like it. Some people really hate it. Um, I don't think it's too bad. I don't personally use it a whole lot. Uh, but again, th these tools are for building your own dashboard. They're not necessarily kind of like pre-generated. Uh, Graphite.js. I'm a big uh, jQuery guy. Um, I'm a big Python guy too, but I'm a big jQuery guy. And Graphite.js simply makes it really, really easy to apply some of the functions that Graphite's so good via mostly readable JavaScript and pull down the graphs versus constructing a big nasty URL and pulling that down. Okay, so. Uh, for people that don't want to build their own dashboard application, there are plenty of existing full-featured dash dashboard applications built on top of Graphite, like this one. Um, someone who speaks better French than me, could they pronounce this, please? Descartes. Descartes, OK, thank you. Um, <coughs> I didn't want to butcher it. Um, and this is actually written by Jason Dixon. Jason Dixon is one of the other kind of like lead graphite maintainer guys, uh, really, really smart guy, done some really interesting, he's written uh, several of these tools actually, some really good stuff. Um, so that's a tool, it's written in uh, Ruby I believe, yeah. Um, one that actually I've used, and just a second, 
I just lost the presentation. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay, so one I've actually used the most professionally is uh, GDash. Um, GDash was written by the guy who wrote M Collective. If you're familiar with uh, M Collective and Puppets, this is not working so well. Sorry, we are having some technical difficulties. Just a second. Okay, um, yeah, GDash was written, written by the guy who wrote M Collective. This is one that I would say professionally I've used this one many times. Um, it's very straightforward to set up and kind of build sets of dashboards. Like um, we had a, we had some users who had an application that monitored their, uh, app, their trading applications and it was overflowing the back office network and causing some serious problems with controlling their applications. And so we set up a dashboard for them using GDash really quick that would show um, when they were starting to max out the links so they could stop doing what they were doing. Um, very, like I said, very straightforward to set up, very good application. Um, so Tassio. Tassio is kind of nice in that it is a real-time alerty dashboard and you can set the graphs to change colors um, when things break or you know, when they go over um, defined thresholds. And these are essentially graphite targets. Like this is one of the metric names, pulse.hermes h10 dash per minute. Um, Tattle. Tattle is kind of fun. The name is kind of fun because it's actually an alerting tool built on top of graphite. It shoots emails. So you can um, log into Tattle and create alerts. It will send you uh, either predictive alerts based on the Holt winners algorithm or um, show you graphs of whatever you are monitoring. <coughs> um, Orion's kind of interesting one I've been meaning to check out. Um, it actually is the only one I've seen that has full blown uh, role based access control. Um, I've actually got some recent use cases where I kind of need this, and it, it supports OAuth, like with, uh, I think, the Google OAuth or GitHub, I believe. Um, and it just, it, this is, it actually allows you to create your own dashboards from this UI without having to always know the kind of Graphite API syntax. Uh, this, is, this is a nice tool. Um, definitely check this out. Graph Explorer is built, built by uh, one of our contributors who works for Vimeo. <coughs> it's got some uh, slightly different concepts, but it's pretty, uh, it's pretty interesting and in that everything is based uh, on tags. And what's nice is you can actually tag sets of metrics and you can search on those tags and you can automatically create graphs uh, based on those tags. Um, again, this is essentially built by uh, Vimeo. They open source this. Um, and I'm assuming they use this to monitor their uh, video website. Uh, they're very interactive. It's, this is a nice tool. If you've used Ganglia Web, you probably hate Gmail on D. Um, sorry, Vladimir. He's the, he's the uh, Ganglia maintainer. Um, but this is essentially, Graphsky is essentially Ganglia built on top of Graphite, like Ganglia Web UI built on top of Graphite. And it's for anyone who's worked in HPC has likely used Graphite at considerable scale. We use it at Ticketmaster, you know, with thousands of hosts. It's a pretty common tool in the HPC industry. And this is basically, like I said, just the same idea, but it's built on top of a Graphite backend. Um, and that should be familiar to anyone who's used that. Um, Dusk is a new one as well. And that's written by um, Jason Dixon, who is one of the graphite co-maintainers. <laughs> like I said, he's written several of these. Uh, it's built kind of interesting for uh, essentially finding hotspots. So you can give it, uh, like here's a good example, collectd.load.load short term. So normally the way collectd sends metrics in is like collectd dot and then a host name. And then the metric name, the short name, and then the actual um, end. And this will just say, 
you know, show me the hot spots of the load on all my hosts that I have in Graphite. And you can see them live. That's, uh, some people find that really useful. Questions? <clears throat> Any of this useful for determining how much carbon you're using? Your uh, carbon footprint? Um, carbon is... Not, not using, putting out. Um, what do you mean exactly? The answer is sort of, but can you can you explain? So the question was: uh, If your servers uh, use the, the electricity coming into to them, of course, is a different factor. But just basically, how much electricity you're using? Um, how much electricity I'm using? Mm -hmm. No. It's a way of measuring well, that. You can figure that out with PMI, maybe. Your or if you're PDUs, you could measure yeah. it off of the PDUs if you use PDUs on your server. Yeah, Basically absolutely. You if you can graph the electrical data. Uh, the answer is yes. Uh, we actually have a guy who, um, yeah, uh, you, you can graph anything. Like, you could say, okay, um, like, I don't know, like, power dot rack dot well, rack unit. Though, graphite is not going to collect that data. Right. Cl so, I think the correct answer is no. Something else has to measure the data, and then graphite will remember graphs. So, so, like you could SNMP poll if you use like the Century, you know, the Century uh, smart PDUs. Um, you could SNMP poll those and say take those those, you know, how many amps or or whatever, and shove that into graphite, and then you could trend that over time and say, oh, you know, um, Equinix gave me a 10, 10 kVA, and I'm about to bust that. So. I should probably order more power or shut down some servers. But graphite itself, and, and then you could match it up with the different, uh, the different other metrics that you're following. Absolutely, and, and see if, mm -hmm. and then see if something, uh, if some particular uh, set of chips is making a problem. A absolutely, something that's really, really nice about graphite. Something that you know, I like to use it for is, for instance, like um, look at say incoming network, like number of ingoing or outgoing uh, packets, and then match that to system load, and then match that to like, excuse me, um, applications like a process running. You say, oh, well, this, this application, I made this change, and this application started just spamming the network, and it's going absolutely crazy, and that's causing the system load to go up, and you can correlate all of those together. And then you can go so far as you can pull your switches and correlate all of that together, and you can actually see kind of trends in your environment. Oh, well, we did a code deploy, and we changed these things, and here's the git commit log, and now you know, our network's just getting hammered. So clearly this is what's at fault. Let's roll back that deploy and figure out what is uh, using it. Um, this is the graphite composer. Like I said, it's not really anything. So, so carbon is kind of self, um, it's like it dog foods its own its own stuff. Um, it actually keeps metrics of what it's doing. Right now it's not doing a whole lot because it's just sitting on my laptop. Um, but, you know, update operations. Uh, let's take some of these. Let's say memory usage. There we go. So this is the memory usage of carbon when it was running. Um, the last few minutes. <clears throat> and then you could say, oh, well, I want to add the CPU usage. Let's see, CPU usage on top of that. So CPU usage. Um, the real interesting about, thing about graphite is basically just that you can apply functions to the various uh, data points. Um, there it's pretty extensive documentation on the functions you can run. Um, minimum value above, sorting, current value below, deviant, uh, remove above value, um, transforming data via integrals, derivatives, you know, summarization, time shifting, like an hour back, um, logarithms. Scale to seconds is actually a really good one. Um, scale your metrics down at like a per second level and see you know, an average of what, based on the data, what it's doing per second. Um, what questions do you guys have? Um, what's 
just a back end storage engine? The question is, what is a back end storage engine? The back end storage engine currently is uh, it's a mix of Carbon and Whisper. <clears throat> there is, in the future, actually, it's a really good question. In the future, there um, there's a kind of distributed time series database called Series, spelled uh, C E R E S, um, and very soon we're likely. Uh, I'm saying this. You know, not guaranteed, um, but we're very likely going to be adding uh, React, Cassandra, Kairos DB, and Influx DB support to the back end. So you can, if you want to really, really scale it out, uh, that is very much on our short-term radar, specifically because companies like mine need need really big scalable back ends. So we're looking at stuff like Influx DB and Kairos and those various bits. But we want to front it with the Graph at Web UI because there's so many existing tools that we can leverage to visualize our data. In, is there a uh, so? What are the dependencies when you uh, build this from the, like the you clone the Git repo? You uh, build it, and then there's a. Do you need the three dependencies? Or? Um, that's a good question. Um, so the so Whisper is pretty much self-contained Python library. It doesn't can, it doesn't require a whole lot of anything except for Cairo. Cairo is the only kind of sticking dependency. Uh, Carbon is built with Twisted. Um, it just requires all of the stuff that Twisted needs. And Graphite Web is a Django application, so it requires Django. And it requires PyCairo because um, all of the graphs are actually rendered through Graphite Web. Uh, anything else, guys? Um, OK, so I wasn't following this as good as I wanted to. But um, the, so, you, so you say graphics not the thing that actually creates the images, right? Uh, Graphite does create the, the created. Yes, it does. Oh, it does create the Yes, it uses PyCairo. <coughs> um, but then you said that there is that web front, there's that HTML5 one rendering. That doesn't create static images, correct. That pulls the data from Graphite as uh, JSON and then renders it client side. So You have the option to do either. I guess, okay, so I, in that case, Graphite's not the thing that's collecting the, the data. Correct. It does not collect the data. And it's not the thing that's rendering the data. What value does Graphite bring in? So Graphite, that's a good question. <laughs> so so can, can you say that again a little bit louder? I don't want to repeat that. Um, <clears throat> In, in the case where like you're using another tool to actually render the image, Graphite's not the thing that's collecting the data, and it's not the thing that's rendering, doing the final rendering. What sure. value does Graphite provide? Okay, so Graphite has. Uh, let me Google really quick. It does math, right? So Graphite transforms the data. That's really uh, the thing that people use Graphite for the most. Um, also. By default, um, Graphite does render the graphs. It's just some people would rather do it in interactive real-time JavaScript. Um, some of the tools like GDash actually will pull down the image and do AJAX hits every 30 seconds by default, I think, and actually pull down a new image. Um, if you have you know, 20,000 data points, JavaScript is just going to suck. It's not going to do it well. And then, of course, you'd want to pull down the actual image. Um, and part of the Graphite web um, application is called the render server. And the render server is basically just, you know, you feed it the metric name and the set of functions that you want to apply. Um, let's see. And yes. And it will actually uh, apply them for you. And so, I, I, you know, just because you're pulling back raw JSON doesn't mean you're pulling back the data points that were shoved in. You're often more likely than not pulling in a derived data set based on the stuff like here, like max series um, or maximum above. Just return the maximum above 10. I just care about what's above 10. Um, you could, of course, you could pull the data yourself and transform it, but you don't have to. Graphite will do that very well for you. Um, or, you know, the, um, can, I, can I take a stab at answering this? Although I, I looked at Graphite please. like two years ago. And my thought was, well, I could insert all this data into a SQL database, and later I can run queries to aggregate and do analysis of the data. Mm -hmm. And every time I rerun those queries, the database server is going to like churn, 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 select all the data, mm -hmm. and do the math and the spit back. Graphite pre-calculates it like as it's being inserted, right? Uh, that depends. If you're using StatsD and aggr the aggregator, it does pre-calculate okay. it. Which um, right? I mean, that, there's your like what it does. Sort of yeah, that, that's that's one of the things. But like, say you want a moving average, uh, you want to actually set a moving average of the data. Um, you could probably do that with SQL. It might be a little interesting, um, or you know, the moving median. Um, I just want the 
I just want the top 10 nth percentile of this data set. Those are the only things I care about. Um, and, and really, the, the value out of graphite is specifically the, the API, um, because you can so trivially um, transform all these data to do really interesting analytics on it. So it sounds like it, it operates on time series data, and, and it's only, for that. Only time series data. That's why I was saying uh, graphite is not a replacement for like Logstash and Elasticsearch. Some people say it is. Um, they're wrong. Um, <laughs> in, in, in fact, um, Logstash has some really great um, actually outputs to graphite. So if you're feeding, you know, if you're using like um, if you're using any tool that feeds data into Elasticsearch, you can very very trivially trivially spit that back out from Logstash into graphite and get some really nice analytics. And the two integrate very well. Uh, Kibana the Logstash kind of web GUI integrates the graphite very well. You can actually use it as a data source. I have sort of a two worlds question for you. Okay. The two worlds are, are two worlds I've lived. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> two, two worlds. I'm sorry to mess up with it. Uh, two worlds I've lived in is I've been a commodities trader mm -hmm. and <clears throat> I've been the person that, that you're basically being in, in earlier worlds. And in the commodities trading world, I do time series. Mm -hmm. I've also been a geophysical person in time series. But in, in the commodities world, I did time series to determine what my trades were going to be. And, and there are platforms that look like this mm -hmm. that are for trading. OK. And then, and then you have this platform that's for determining What's going on with the machine? It, it, it's graphite is it's not for so. So, so, so you've got these two worlds, and and, and they're they're both. You know, if, if you look at it, it's just data. Time series data, specifically it's, for yeah, graphite. It's just time series data, graphically displayed. So, why would you rebuild that when? when there's already tools out there that you could have just found? Well, well can, you, can you name some of those tools? So, so the question was, why, why use Graphite when there are existing tools for, like, for instance, for finance that do the same thing? Um, trade, trade, trade whatever, you know. There, there's, there's and, and how much does it cost? They're at $35 now. This is free. This was actually not built for finance. This was built by uh, Orbitz for um, their, yeah, exactly. This, this was built by Chris Davis at Orbitz uh, several years ago. And he then moved on to Sears. And Sears did a lot of their uh, business intelligence and a lot of their internal you know, kind of analytics, number crunching, um, using Graphite. Um, he then moved on to um, a couple companies, I believe. And then he went to Google and now you know, he's in the, the Google black hole, and no one has heard from him since. Yeah, that's, yeah. And that's where we're at now. Um, but okay, so, so another question then is, uh, I was talking to a guy at Thursday night, Ray Briones, or no, Ryan Briones, who's looking at figuring out what's going on with open programs and how to figure out how to, trying to make a... Uh, a way to, so when people don't want to recreate the world, they can figure out that the world's already been created. That's called so, GitHub. So, so if, I have, if I have this trading platform, and, and I've seen this trading platform before, and, I, and then I want to do this, now, now I lost the turn. Okay, we're going to go. Is, um, <coughs> I just, I just don't want to recreate the world. That's all. It, and so how but then I, the answer is use graphite. So how could I find out if, if, the, uh, if the training platform is open, if it's already been recreated in open source? Um, I, I don't know how to answer that question. The analytics bit of the training platform? Um, again, I'm, I'm not speaking anything about my work. This is about the question. Um, the analytics bit of the trading platform you could potentially do in a tool like Graphite. Um, it's certainly built for doing time series analytics. 
um, standard deviation of the whole series, standard deviation, um, you know, like that, that, that is what it's for. It's, it's time series data. And if it's time series data, you want to feed into it and you want to apply some sort of trans, you know, transformations and then do time series out of it, you absolutely can. Um, some people actually will do, they'll pull data out of Graphite and throw it into R. Maybe that's a better use for finance. Uh, I know R is massive in the finance and, and, and in the HPC industry. Um, I'd like, um, yeah, in Pandas, absolutely. Pandas is huge, perfect, perfect example. I'm sorry? Yes. Is there like what does that have that option as well to just do passive filtering? That's what you use the uh, the aggregator or stats D for. Yes. You say take yes, take take the top one percent or, or one out of every ten and shove them in. And it will, it will you could either set it to average those those ten data points into one or just pick, you know, one out of ten. Um, where does the get data get stored? Uh, where does it get stored? Um, so it gets stored in disk in whisper format. Uh, Whisper is that Python kind of RD like library. Um, and it's just a uh, like metric name. Like, so the metrics, so let me see if I can get it. Is it a flat file? It, it is a flat file. Like a CBS file uh, actually, I can pull one up if you give me just a second. It's a file. Um, <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's actually a Whisper format. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you one really quick. Um, Uh, this is really hard to read. Wow. So does that mean that, like, if you wanted to do like long-term analytics, you'd have to grab this flat file and store it into like a, a structured database? Then? N no. Um, that's what. That's the point of this file is to keep okay. those. This, oh, I thought Whisper was like a flat file. Uh, no, 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 no. Whisper is definitely a. It, it's it's a time series database. It's just it's it's I mean it's binary data. Do you like strings or you put like strings on it or something? Is it? I don't see. Um, yeah, it's 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 a binary <laughs> database. <laughs> so. What other application uses this Whisper format? So like there you go. If you wanted to pull the data out of it, you use Whisper Dump. No. <clears throat> Uh, whisper, there's a bunch of whisper dump, resize, update, whisper fetch. You want to fetch just like metrics from a certain time period. Um, it's, if you're familiar with the RD, conceptually it's the same. It's just it allows you to backfill holes in missing. Um, we used to use the uh, Graphite API to pick metrics. I mean, there's like absolutely. A very... uh, absolutely. So, yeah, the, the, point of, the point of the API, like once you kind of learn some of the functions, is you can. You can say, well, I want, you know, I, I, I want x dot y dot z, but not b. <clears throat> or I want food at bar star, but not this one. Yeah, and you can say start and from, and you can specify. We did graphite, like we let graphite make the images. Mm -hmm. and, and we would have these Most people do. URLs, and we'd stick them on a wiki page. Like mm -hmm. for my team, would have one for when we did hotel houses or something. And, and yeah, that... Instead of, I've never looked at the Whisper database. Normally speaking, the only way you, you, you're more than willing, like you're more than able to interact directly with the Whisper database, but you don't really need to. Um, the getting it from the uh, kind of like through the URL API yeah. is very very easy. And what's nice is you go in the composer and you create a graph. You right click on it and say open image in new tab, and that will give you the whole URL. You can take that URL if you want it to and say new um, graph from URL and that'll pop the graph right into the dashboard. And then you can, then you can do transformations on that specific graph and um, save it and do whatever you want with it. And there's the web command line interface. Um, uh, that's not really, that's, that's sort of deprecated. Oh, okay. Um, I, sometimes I would get tired of clicking all over yeah, the place and then, then I could type it by hand. Um, but I think the future for the project is really, um, really beefing up the back end and using some of the newer, more interesting time series databases like 
like Influx and React and Cassandra. <coughs> so uh, how trivial is it to get SNMP data into this thing? So Quite. I, it looks like it's... A, a, a SNMP walk, uh, grep, pipe, netcat. That's what I figured. So very, so very so trivial. In yeah, this is this is a slam dunk. Um, yeah. Okay, so second question: uh, Are there any packages available for various distros? That is a great question. It, it's yes. Um, it depends on the distro, and the quality of the package depends on the distro. Generally speaking, on any modern Fedora or uh, Ubuntu or Debian derivative, you can probably do like app get install, Python whisper, Python carbon, graphite web, and that'll get you what you need, everything. Um, you'll have to do a little bit of configuration to say like, you know, where, how you want the settings, if you want, like, if you want people to authenticate with say LDAP credentials for creating their own dashboards <coughs> or editing other people's dashboards, um, there'll probably be a little bit of setup involved, but yes. Excellent. Um, I, I would really recommend hop in the IRC channel and uh, hash graphite on Freenode and ask. There's a lot of people in there, and I'm not always able to answer questions during the day because I have a real job. Um, unfortunately, I can't grow my Unix beard all day, um, so I had to shave it. Um, but there are lots of people who will help you. It's we, we try to be an open community. Um, we're still kind of going through some. Um, Transitions, but it, it, we do our best. So, so is anybody in HPC where you trying to do any like um, uh, collection for like batch managers and things like that? You know. So, that's, that's a the, 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 the answer is. Data. The, the, so, so, the question was: Is anyone in HPC land trying to do collection of um, batch, batch, batch like managers. job managers? Um, yes, the answer is definitely yes. Um, I can't talk about our specific use case because my working DA is very restrictive. Um, but for some companies that I know of, um, actually a few universities that use graphite, the answer is yes, they do. Um, questions? Anyone else? Are your uh, slides online? Somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, the, um, they're actually, if you're on IRC, they're on. Um, so go to here. I'll just show you. It'll be easiest probably. Go. Go to visionlinux.org. Graphite for the masses, or if you're more uh, code inclined, go to. You can just post the URL to your video. Anymore. Yeah, that's true. There you go. And it's use, uh, I use Reveal.js. It's kind of nice, and then I can just throw it up in a web server, and anyone can view it, and it's responsive from like mobile phones or tablets. And Ooh, you should post the URL to the video, so that gets included in the video. <laughs> nice. Recursion error. <coughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's pretty much all I got. Cool. Yeah, <laughs>